वेलकम बैक एवरीबडी एंड दिस इज द थर्ड लेक्चर टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट इन टैक्सेशन हे वॉट सब्जेक्ट वी आर स्टडिंग डायरेक्ट टैक्स एंड इन दैट डायरेक्ट टैक्स वॉट इज द ओनली टैक्स लेफ्ट एंड दैट इज इनकम टैक्स वी नो वॉट इज टैक्स बट डिड वी स्टडी वॉट इज इनकम शैल वी डू इट टूडे आर यू ऑलरेडी सो इनकम इज डिफाइंड इन सेक्शन टू क्लॉज ट्वेंटी फोर इनकम इज डिफाइंड इन टू क्लॉज ट्वेंटी फोर नाउ इफ समबडी आस्क मी वॉट इज इनकम I can discuss the very big definition which is given under section टू clause ट्वेंटी फोर बट अगेन यू हैव टू मेमोराइज सो मच ऑफ कंटेंट एंड इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर यू सो वॉट आई फील वॉट आई डू कॉमनली दैट लेट अस इग्नोर द डेफिनेशन फॉर द टाइम बींग बिकॉज इट गोज अराउंड टू पेजेस बिकॉज you study some heads of income right income from salary house property profits and gains of business and profession capital gains other sources so in these five heads when you study everything in detail you will understand the definition of income also but as of now studying directly will be complicated but there are some analytical aspects of income definition that i feel at least we should understand and i included that in the notes so let's get started first thing they talk about whether income should be in cash or the income should be in kind the answer is both ways are okay so if you receive income in cash then it will be recorded as it is okay but if suppose if you receive income in kind that means in terms of certain goods or in certain uh, movable assets right or immovable assets also so what will you do in that case so what happens is in income tax itself they gave the rules for determining the money value suppose example you get some mobile phone physical mobile phone for free so how to determine the value of mobile phone if the rules are given in income tax act then let us follow that like example for shares for jewelry they have given proper rules so as per that rules or as per the sections given in income tax if we can value that kind item that means item which we received in kind as income then we will value it but if we cannot value as per the income tax sections or the income tax rules then the market value of it will be treated as the income like example if you got as gift iphone 14 pro right you received iphone 14 pro max 8 gb variant 128 gb storage you received for example now when we go to income tax rules and act there is no valuation rules for it so what will happen then what is the market price of it will become the value as income received by you simple if you received reliance shares if you received reliance shares they are already traded on the stock exchange people are buying it in stock exchange selling it on stock exchange so on that day what is the price the trading price that price will be taken as the income received by you right so simple if you receive income in cash the money received will be your income if you received goods or anything the income in kind then either income tax rule should be there for valuation and money value should be determined and accordingly your income is decided 
if no rules are there no sections are there which tell what is the value of income then it is very clear that your income is the market value of such items which you received in kind significance of method of accounting hey there are three heads of income like income from salary income from house property income from capital gains again repeat with me income from salary income from house property income from capital gain for these three heads your method of accounting how you maintain the books of accounts is irrelevant bhul jao kaam ka nahi hai not at all relevant but if you take two heads like profits and gains of business and profession and income from other sources profits and gains of business and profession income from other sources for these two heads your method of accounting becomes relevant like there are two methods of accounting you either follow cash basis of accounting or you follow accrual basis of accounting now whatever method you follow the same method will be used for computing income under income tax act suppose you are doing some business you are following cash method of accounting for your books of accounts also you follow cash basis then your income ta- income as per income tax will also be calculated as per cash basis in your business if you follow mercantile basis accrual basis due basis all are one and the same then your income tax wise also your income computed on due basis only accrual basis only okay clear koi doubt no so as your method of accounting is so your income computation under income tax is in case of two heads what are they profits and gains of business and profession and income from other sources let's come to the third one now let's try to understand that there is something called as notional income now suppose in reliance itself there may be hundreds of departments one department sells goods to another department they also show departmental profit but for income tax purpose is this profit considered is this profit taxable the answer is no you cannot earn income from yourself correct ganesh sir cannot sell courses to ganesh sir himself and say that he earned lot of income are nahi hota yaar aise so that's why interdepartmental profits are good for accounting perform- purpose performance measurement but when it comes to income tax such notional incomes interdepartmental profits or profit from yourself are totally ignored not taxed at all source of income now you can earn income from any source what is the problem no problem like you have four houses you gave it on rent your income from first house is one source house two is second source house three is third source house four is fourth source you earn income from lottery you earn income from dividend you earn income from interest you earn income from salary you earn income from selling properties or you may earn income from any gifts received from your friends so income sources when we talk about there can be many sources of income okay right now we have to understand capital versus revenue now in short if you ask me what is capital something which is long term is capital something which is short term routine regular is revenue now this is general explanation don't apply everywhere in income tax and question me please okay in general sense something which is long term which is lump sum non recurring is capital something which is routine recurring is revenue when you sell the goods sales is your revenue receipt so that sales is taxable income 
सो रेवेन्यू रिसीट आर जनरली टैक्स बट इनकम टैक्स एक्ट इट सेल्फ से इज दैट एग्रीकल्चरल इनकम इज एग्जाम फ्रॉम टैक्स दैट मीन्स एग्रीकल्चरल इनकम इज रेवेन्यू इन नेचर बट स्टिल इट इज नॉट टैक्सेबल सो वॉट डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट रेवेन्यू आइटम्स देर आर मेनी एग्जाम्पल्स विच आई कैन गिव बट यू विल गेट कंफ्यूज सिंपली रिमेंबर रेवेन्यू रिसीट्स आर जनरली टैक्सड बट इफ इन इनकम टैक्स दे से इट इज एग्जैम्ड देन इट इज एग्जैम्ड दैट सेट नाउ लेट्स गो फॉरवर्ड कैपिटल रिसीट्स लाइक यू टूक लोन फ्रॉम द बैंक यू सोल्ड द शेयर्स ऑफ युअर कंपनी एंड रिसीव्ड मनी सो वॉट इज दिस रेवेन्यू रिसीट कैन वी टैक्स इट इज इट युअर इनकम ओ सॉरी दीज आर कैपिटल रिसीट्स इज इट इनकम नो राइट these are simply loan these are capital not income so not taxable so generally capital receipts are not incomes and they are not taxable but suppose you sold land you sold shares and received money so such capital receipts are taxable so what did we understand generally capital receipts are not income they are not taxable but certain capital receipts which are mentioned under income tax act specifically explained that they are income under income tax act they are taxable so did you understand the difference between revenue and capital exactly opposite generally every revenue receipt is taxable but if income tax exempts it is not taxable generally every capital receipt is not income but if it is specifically considered as income under income tax act then we can say it is income that's it loss when we talk about income income doesn't just mean that positive income right when you get income government says that we'll collect tax from you but when you get loss government also should help you right you support you right that's why government included this and said that okay if it is negative income that is loss still government will consider it they will give you certain benefits we'll discuss about it when we discuss the chapter set off and carry forward of losses but as of now if the income is plus we will add to the incomes if it is loss that is minus we'll deduct it from income so only the net income is taxable okay so government is kind enough don't worry now disputed income is disputed income taxable suppose house property rent is there brothers are fighting with each other that this is his income or that in that person's income government says no problem let your fight continue but first our tax ha government aise hi bolti hai who receives the rent he is the person who is earning income let him pay the tax first after that when the dispute is resolved some settlement happens accordingly government will charge that person and collect from that person if something is to be refunded government will refund but simply remember because the property is in dispute because the income is in dispute government will not stop taxation government says who is in receipt let him pay the tax first let alone let us see okay now if you received income in lump sum doesn't mean that uh, we will not tax it suppose you sold building and you received amount in lump sum now that is taxable under capital gains so it will be taxable same way some receipts are there if you receive in lump sum 
that is taxed under PGBP. Then they are taxed under PGBP. Like you win lottery, it is also lump sum, but it is taxable under other sources. So what I wanted to convey to you, income is income. Whether it is lump sum or in installment doesn't make difference. It is taxable. That's it. Okay. Reimbursement. Suppose example, I was filing GST returns for my client. I paid his taxes from my bank account. Later on, he reimbursed that money to me. Now, when I received it, is it taxable for me? The answer is absolutely no. I received it because I paid for him. So, this type of reimbursement of certain expenses, it is not at all taxable. Reimbursement of expenses is not at all taxable. Now, let us understand that there is something called as legality. Whether the income is legal or illegal, doesn't matter. Every income is taxable. If you are selling drugs, cocaine, uh, all that and earning some income, that is also taxable under income tax. Ha, after that, income tax department will hand over that people to Narcotics Control Bureau. Right? And they will put them in jail under that particular law. But because the income is illegal, government will not say that we will not tax them. It is illegal. Suppose example, on 26th January, the Khalistani group, the Punjabi people, the Sikh people did lot of protests at uh, Lal Kila, Red Fort. 26 January 2021. We cannot forget. Thousands of crores were poured into that movement uh, given from Canada, America, Germany, Pakistan to these Khalistani Sikh people to do protests in India. Now that is an illegal income against the country. Even Indian flag was removed. Such income is also taxable. When government finds, trace such income, government will tax them. And because the protests were illegal, the people who were involved in the protest, the Punjabi people, the Sikh people, the uh, Khalistani people, anti-India people, they will also be put in jail, many were put in jail. Okay? Double taxation. So what I said, illegal or legal, income is taxable, that's it. Double taxation. If suppose any income is there, which satisfies the conditions in both the heads, doesn't mean that the income is taxed twice. Income once earned will be taxed only once. There is no double taxation allowed under Income Tax Act. Okay, very good. Now let's go, come to the next thing. Concept of mutual activity. So if you earn income, by mutual activity, is it taxable? Are yaar, some 10-20 friends are there. They are contributing money to a common chit. And then somebody who is in need, getting the money and continuously paying them back. Now, whatever profit earned out of this chit activity, mutual activity, they again share amongst themselves. Such activity is not at all taxable. But if suppose ICWA, CA institutes are there, right? Non-profit organizations are there, trade associations are there, professional associations like CACMA, institutes are there. They get money from all the members and then they earn profit out of it. And they cannot say that it is by mutual activity and escape taxes. They have to pay tax. It is taxable income. Okay, whether it is trade professional association, they have to pay taxes on the income received from members. Okay, right. Let's go to the next story. If it is banking cooperative society or insurance cooperative society, even though it is by mutual activity, still the income is taxable. 
सो जनरली वॉट हैपन्स इज आई टेल यू एक्चुअली वेन दे डू म्यूचुअल एक्टिविटी इन एसोसिएशन गवर्नमेंट सेज द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ यूनिटी अप्लाइज दैट मीन्स ऑल ऑफ देम टूगेदर आर ट्रीटेड एज वन सो दैट्स वाई गवर्नमेंट कैन नॉट टैक्स दम but if it is trade professional association but if it is banking association if it is insurance cooperative society government says we will not treat all the members as one we will treat the aso tax the association on the profits earned income earned even though they may pay back to the members right that's what they said now dekho pin money is a concept you have to pay certain amount to your wife once you are married for household expenses now you are anyhow paying tax on the income earned right now you paid to your wife will she again pay tax the answer is no so pin money received by wife for household activity that is not at all a taxable income because husband is already taxed on such income but if suppose that housewife is super smart she saves certain money invest in some shares some debentures or lends it to somebody and earn some income whether it is interest income by dividend interest income when she lends the money or dividend income when she invest in shares that income is taxable so pin money as if is not taxable but if you earn income out of it that is taxable and many housewife do the same in case of difficult times they take out all their hidden money and protect the family and that's the beauty of indian family system that wife takes care of the family responsibilities and husband goes out and earn lot of money and they balance everything without fighting mutuality understanding right so of course in today's times lot of things are happening because of which the beauty is now lost but it's our society's responsibility to bring back that beauty now of course if somebody can earn they should earn but of course dividing responsibilities sharing responsibilities doing it with lot of affection and love is the real beauty of society right i saw one photo that facebook's mark my zuckerberg and his wife were cutting some vegetables and cooking food together now see understand everybody is busy on facebook at that time right he made everybody busy with facebook but he and his wife are sharing responsibility in house and doing all the works that's great so anyhow pin money we understood right now so what we have to understand that there is something called as award if suppose some cricket players are there like suresh raina is there uh, they are in a uh, man of the match award so for them the income is taxable under pgbp professional income they are professional athletes meera bai chanu won weightlifting championship and she got some cash award or some income out of it then it is professional income for her and it is taxable if suppose r r r earns some income at uh, oscars by winning some ten prize for the movie song right and that is also taxable right under professional income but if suppose a person like me plays cricket and earns income casual activity for me right it will come under other sources so you should see is it the main activity for earning income then it is pgvp if it is not the main activity for the award then it is other sources simple as that 
ओके एम्बेजलमेंट समबडी इज स्टीलिंग कैश इट इज कॉल्ड एम्बेजलमेंट एंड एम्बेजलमेंट इज टैक्सेबल ऑफ कोर्स द थीव विल बी कॉट बाय पुलिस एंड पुट इनटू जेल समथिंग विल हैपन बट एम्बेजलमेंट इट सेल्फ इज टैक्सेबल अंडर इनकम टैक्स एक्ट बिकॉज लीगल इनकम इलीगल इनकम बोथ आर टैक्सेबल करेक्ट नाउ कंटेंजेंट इनकम अरे यार वेदर इट इज योर इनकम और नॉट इट इज कंटिजेंट कंटिजेंट मीन डाउटफुल सो इट इज नॉट इनकम नॉट अ टैक्सेबल इनकम ओके राइट सब्सिडी इफ यू ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड सब्सिडी इट इज सिंपली सम गवर्नमेंट एड और एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एड फॉर एनी एक्टिविटी they pay you money if it is for purchase of particular asset then from the cost of that asset actual cost of the asset we will reduce the subsidy amount now that subsidy is not taxable again okay but if it is in relation to your project you got subsidy then that subsidy income is generally taxable generally taxable but if income tax act specifically exempts it then such subsidy is not taxable okay so in simple language if you receive subsidy is it in relation to asset is it reduced from the cost of the asset then not separately taxable if it is other case not asset but otherwise then it is generally taxable but if income tax act specifically exempts it then it is exempt okay now anyhow by the time you would have understood that there are five heads of income section 14 talks about heads of income right we understood what is income under section 2 class 24 now let us understand heads of income section 14 there are five heads of income let me tell in a story if you want to start your career what do you think about sir achhi company mein job lag jaye bas government naukri lag jaye bas so if you think like that you are aspiring to earn salary income because there is certain employer who will be paying you salary correct so that salary income is the first head of income then you will feel that i should construct some house properties then give it on rent to somebody right so this house property your own house property you are giving it on rent and earning income this is income from house property then you may feel that this income is not sufficient let me do some business so that becomes third source of uh, third head of income that is income from business profits and gains of business or profession then you go to the fourth head that is income from capital gains you sell property shares earn income that is income from capital gain and something which is not taxable under the first four heads will be taxed under income from other sources like winnings from lottery income interest income dividend on shares income right i correcting the university papers and getting income so i am not a university teacher right i am not the employee of university right so if i correct i get income it is income from other sources so what are the five heads of income chalo repeat with me section 14 talks about heads of income section 14 talks about heads of income first head income under the head salary second head income under the head house property third head income under the head profits and gains of business or profession fourth income under the head capital gains fifth and the residual head that means income not taxable under the first four will be taxed under the fifth that is income under the head other sources income from other sources now why we should study this heads of income what is the significance the significance is very clear please try to understand dekho every income head has its own importance we want that particular income should be taxed under that particular head to which it belongs 
what will happen if you do that you can claim the deductions which are given under that respective head suppose you are actually paying rent and you are also getting house rent allowance from your employer so your employer is paying you house rent allowance some money to pay the rent now because your employer is giving you will tax that hra under salary head and you will deduct the rent from that hra allowance now if hra is taxed under house property then can you deduct the rent there is no section which will permit you under house property to deduct it so that's why any income particular income specific income should be taxed under respective head so that the deductions can be claimed you can enjoy the deductions for it okay now next thing what is the difference between heads and sources they go there are five heads which are very clear to all of you but sources can be unlimited right you can earn from many sources and even under one particular head there can be many sources like i said income from house property is one head but under that you can have how house one as one source house two as another source house three as another source correct so like that you should understand that even under particular head there may be many sources this way you should understand the difference so sources are many heads are five okay under one head there can be multiple sources but one source income will be taxed only under that particular head to which it belongs now you may ask me question sir how to know this don't worry for that we will have separate chapters in detail to understand but by names you can generally understand now also correct if suppose you are receiving salary income you are receiving any money from employer taxed under salary if you are receiving rent of your own house property taxed under house property you are doing business or continuing your profession taxed under pgbp profits and gains of business and profession you sold capital asset and earn income capital gains any other types income from others this way you should be able to identify okay very good now let's continue with the understanding that what is gross total income gross total income is as simple as that income from salary plus house property plus pgap plus capital gains plus other sources when we do the total of this five we call it as income from other sources when we do the total of this five we call it as income from other sources oh wrong kya pagal ho gaya maybe hai na chalo again i'll repeat for you so first income from salary income from house property income from business and profession income from capital gains income from other sources when we do the total we get gross total income kya milta beta aap sabko gross total income and from this gross total income when we add these five heads gross total income we get from that we deduct deductions under it c to it u deductions under it c to it u okay once we deduct this we get taxable income that is total income some people call it as net income some people call it as taxable income some people call it as total income but from gross total income you should deduct itc deductions then you will get this okay very good please remember this chart because we will be using later on okay first part now rounding up of income under 288a section rounding up of tax under 288b section simple yaar to the nearest 10 rupee to the nearest 10 rupee if it is 5 rupees or more 
take the next 10 rupee less than 5 rupee ignore that fraction like example if i say 104 rupees take 100 rupees if i say 105 rupees take 110 rupees if i say 101 rupee take 100 rupees if i say 107 rupees take 110 rupees that means if it is 5 or more take 10 if it is less than 5 ignore that rupees that numbers okay so your income when i talk about income it is total income net taxable income and when i talk, talk about tax it may be your advance tax it may be your tax deducted at source it may be your final tax payable it may be including such okay so your net tax liability your tds advance tax all it should be multiplied in rupees 10 multiple of 10 it should be that's what section 288a talks about rounding up of income 288b talking about rounding up of tax okay provisions are there two illustrations are given very simple same like my examples you can check now there are actually 10 steps which you will be learning in the whole subject itself in the whole subject you will be learning the 10 steps which i'll be teaching now the first step to actually compute your income and final tax liability is your residential status they go suppose example somebody is staying in america can we tax him for his income no right like i am staying in india for my income should i pay tax the answer is absolutely yes so what did you understand out of this you should understand that residential status where do you stay matters a lot so step one talks about residential status and it also talks about from where you are in the income suppose example an person staying in america is earning income from india government will say hey you aren't in india come on please pay tax in india hmm? so residential status talks about not only where the person stays but also from where the income is earned both these aspects are covered in detail in the next chapter but please determine remember that step one which you will learn in the whole subject is determining residential status step two talks about five heads of income okay step two talks about five heads of income under each head how much income is there you have to compute in income under head salary how much compute income under house property how much you compute income under pgvp income under capital gain how much you compute for each head separately that's what step two talks about step three says that do the total of the five find out gross total income this is step three simple which we just learned now correct now step four talks about deductions that also we discussed itc to itu deductions that we will deduct and uh, once we deduct we get net taxable income now once you get the net taxable income what should be the next thing to do you have to round it off and that's what the fifth step is 288a just now we studied or not yeah so it talks about rounding up of income to the nearest 10 rupee fifth step over sixth step talks about the tax rates sixth step tax rates so whatever the rates are applicable to that particular person that rates will be applied and tax will be computed this is step six we'll do a lot of problems in this chapter itself don't worry step seven talks about rebate under section 87a now that also we'll discuss here it is nothing but discount in tax are discount 
you will ask discount to the sellers right same way we will also get discount from tax department that is discount rebate under section 87a this is step 7 step 8 says that tax as per step 6 minus rebate under step 7 if applicable then you will get some money right on that you have to add surcharge so what is surcharge surcharge tax on tax additional tax if suppose your income is super high then government says are super high income right you should pay extra tax that is surcharge are you would have heard narendra modi right narendra modi always says ameero se lunga aur garibon ko dunga that's why during covid lockdown you would have seen that government distributed free ration to all the people right without any single rupee and still that free ration continues covid vaccination totally free to everybody yes or no so what is this so for that additional tax on people who earn extra income and that is surcharge step 8 once surcharge is added then you get some money correct on that health and education such is added so you pay for health you pay for health treatment like ayushman card is there esi card is there right all that free government hospitals are there how it is developed there are many multiple aims especially after 2014 many aims are created uh, developed right health and education many iams are created many iits are created how it happened because you are paying for it it is your contribution health and education says step 9 and once we add that we get total net taxable liability you have to round it off to the nearest 10 rupee as per section 288 b and that's step 10 so what are the 10 steps which we discussed till now we know now now i can actually repeat it revise it for you and so that you can remember but there is no use general knowledge topic it is you got general knowledge right when we do the whole subject this will become simple for you like this okay so as of now simply remember that there are 10 steps which we today came to know about general idea we got we'll do numerical problems we'll do learn lot of provisions to understand this in detail now come to the next topic and that is simply your differences between tax planning tax avoidance tax evasion and the last one is tax management let's try to understand suppose government gives lot of exemptions government gives under income tax itself government gives lot of exemptions you are in this income not taxable that income not taxable agricultural income not taxable uh, you are an in income by recycling the waste that income also not taxable you are in royalty are up to certain limit not taxable so like that government says certain incomes are not taxable you are in that income who stopped you right you do certain businesses government says we will not tax that businesses so what we studied till now that use that exemptions government will give certain deductions use that government will give certain reliefs rebates use that and whatever government legally gave as per the law you use it and save some tax that is tax planning so use what government gave to you as benefits and save tax that is tax planning so in simple language you are following the law not only just by words but morally ethically also so if you are right as per script and as per soul you are right as per the law and as per the morals then you are doing tax planning and that is absolutely right fine second one is tax avoidance 
you just try to find the loopholes in law and try to save the tax by using the loopholes if you try to save the tax by using the loopholes in the tax law then you are doing tax avoidance government don't encourage this this is short term only tax planning is long term and encouraged but tax avoidance you use the loopholes you bend the things in such a way that you don't break the law and you escape taxes this is tax avoidance so this is not encouraged but in short term you can escape but long run it will not work so you are right as per the script as per the law if you are avoiding tax tax evasion but you are not morally right in tax planning you are morally right and script wise law wise also right in tax avoidance you are right as per script but not right as per morals but there is even dangerous that is tax evasion what is tax evasion tax evasion is simply not right as per law not right as per morals you simply escape taxes many people earn black money whether it is criminal black money or earning money without showing to the government at all this is called as tax evasion this is illegal and if you are caught you will have to pay severe penalties and sometimes even go to jail also are amitabh bachchan's tax cases are there amitabh bachchan also involved in such activities ha huh? you don't know are you try to search in google you will understand they uh, british virgin islands are there uh, different different islands where there is no tax at all they try to create companies there and whatever income they earned in india they simply shift to that countries and try to avoid taxes they do like this so what is this this is tax evasion totally wrong punishable in the court of law ha uh, there are lot of enquiries going on on aishwarya rai bachchan 2 pandora paper leak panama paper leak you would have heard of about it yes or no so this is tax evasion what is tax evasion simply tell me tax evasion is simply you don't follow the law you don't follow morality totally wrong this is tax evasion what is tax management if you want to do tax planning then tax management is a complementary thing basically preparing a proper tax calendar if you prepare a proper tax calendar and follow the deadlines as per income tax act whatever income details have to be given you are giving on time whatever payment of taxes has to be done you are paying on time this is called as tax management this will always help you to uh, avoid the penalties unnecessary payments you are doing through penalties right unnecessary payments you do by paying interest to income tax department so these penalties interest fees which you unnecessarily pay you can avoid by doing proper tax management so tax management is just simply complementary to supports the tax planning activity okay this is what tax management is now we understood what are all these four words correct shall we read everything and understand all these things are you all ready chalo let's do that now now we have to see the differences between tax planning tax avoidance tax evasion and tax management as i said the same difference is there but there are many aspects which have to be covered so let us read one by one and understand now what is the definition see tax planning definition now it is a way to reduce tax liability by taking full advantage provided by the act that's what i said right through various exemptions deductions rebates and reliefs 
like example you are an individual and uh, you pay life insurance premium so when you pay life insurance premium government says okay we'll give you some deduction benefit you can save some tax because of it so using the law related provisions whatever given in the income tax act or rules using it to save tax that's what tax planning is you can use the exemption deduction rebates and reliefs now what is avoidance tax avoidance it is an exercise by which the assessee legally takes advantage of the loopholes in the act so what are the loopholes identify them and save the tax now are you following the law the answer is yes but are you ethically morally correct the answer is no because you are using the limitations you are using the loopholes of the law right so in simple language you are simply doing a theft and finding such place where the policy is not available so that you can run from that place this is tax avoidance so this is something like a thief example okay now tax evasion these are not thieves these are these are directly who even threaten the police also they don't even fear about police the khalistani gundas right so tax evasion what is it it is the illegal way illegal way that means you are doing criminal activity through which you are earning income selling drugs by earning income something which is not permitted under law and you are doing such things and earning income not showing the records to the government right so this is what tax evasion is or you are doing right business only but no records are shown to government no single rupee tax is paid right this is tax evasion it is the illegal way to reduce tax liability by deliberately you know in a planned way suppressing income or sale or by increasing expenditure now generally when it is tax evasion they do these things also but mostly it is criminal okay many people may show more expenditure dummy employees and dummy salaries and they make the income zero like example actual companies there they earned money income and then they have to deduct expenses also right they are shown employees who are not actual employees dummy employees and showed the salary that expenditure so nakli expenditure this is one way of escaping the taxes and it is tax evasion which results in reduction of total income of the assessee this way you are escaping tax and it is totally wrong tax evasion tax management it is complementary to tax planning and it is right government encourages it it is procedure of procedure to comply with the provisions of the law so you will write down that proper dates formats everything so that you can comply with the law now what are the features same thing similar to that is explained here again tax planning is the practice to follow the provisions of law you are ethically and legally right within the moral framework so you are morally right also tax avoidance is the practice of bending the law without breaking it so you are not breaking the law you are not failing to follow the law but you are just bending it such way that you can escape paying taxes without breaking the law but you are morally wrong okay next thing tax evasion is illegal totally both in script that is as per law or moral that is ethics next one Imp uh, tax management it is implementation or execution it is implementation 
और एग्जीक्यूशन पार्ट ऑफ टैक्सेशन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो सपोज यू आर अ स्मॉल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन यू मे नॉट हैव अ टैक्सेशन डिपार्टमेंट but when you think about big corporates like reliance you think about deloitte you think about ey adani group they have their tax division separate which continuously focuses to follow the law and plan the things in such a way that you timely file everything you information to the departments and also pay taxes which are right as per law and save using the tools of law now come to the next thing object what is the object your object obviously in all these four cases is simply to reduce the tax only but are the means right are the ways right that's what the differentiating point is so in tax planning you try to reduce the liability by applying script and moral of the law so you follow both in tax avoidance to reduce the tax liability to the minimum by applying script that means you use the law bend the law oh, right and uh, you don't follow the morals that's what they indirectly said that's why they use the word only right next tax evasion to reduce tax liability by applying unfair means totally unfair dummy employees you showed dummy invoices for expenditures you showed right this is tax evasion criminal activity income is there you did not show to government any how you will not show tax management to comply with the provisions of law so you are complying with the provisions of law now come to the next point you understood the features definitions object what is the approach the approach is very clear in tax planning the approach is it is futuristic basically future oriented and positive in nature so it is futuristic and positive in nature tax planning long term i said right hmm the planning is made today to avail benefits in future i can correct it by saying that to avail benefits in present and future that would be more appropriate okay chalo tax avoidance it is also futuristic but it is short term i said right so basically it is tax avoidance is futuristic but short term in nature as loopholes of the law will be corrected in future by the amendments in the law i said na annual amendments so that loopholes will be filled with annual amendments tax evasion it is concerned with past and applied after the liability of tax has arisen okay it is done with negative approach to avail benefits by killing the moral of law i will simply say it is killing not only the moral but also the law okay this is tax evasion tax management let's come to now it is continuous approach which is concerned with past that means you aren't in come in past now you have to file the tax returns right if you showed wrong information in the past correct it by rectifications so you are just trying to apply on a continuous basis the right means by rectification revision correct present so you are correcting the past by rectification and revision you are filing the returns on time that is present and you are also using tax planning tools to save taxes in future that is corrective action planning for future due dates that is corrective action that is tax management now come to tax planning what is the benefit of tax planning what will i get you get long term tax savings that's what the benefit and benefits is in long term tax avoidance the benefit is in short run tax 
evasion there is no benefit only penalties generally benefits do not arise but it causes penalties and prosecution so penalty and prosecution will be caused tax management penalty interest and prosecution can be avoided unnecessarily you will not fall in trouble if you do tax planning that tax management also okay treatment of law how will you treat the law in tax planning you use the benefits of law in tax evasion you try to use the loopholes of the law in tax evasion you try to break the law totally you override the law totally in tax management you try to implement the law that means you try to comply with the law that's what you do practice tax planning as a practice is to tax save tax avoidance is to hedge the tax right not right you try to create a fence so that you can avoid tax that's wrong hedging is fencing in tax evasion it is simply concealing the tax chor right chor machai sure tax concealment is in tax evasion and in tax management you try to administer do things at the right time in the right way that's what tax management is the need yes tax planning is desirable government encourages tax avoidance should be avoided that's what right tax evasion is objectionable government will object and even can punish you put you in jail can impose severe penalties tax management it is essential for every organization that's what i have to say morality yes you follow morals when you do tax planning don't follow morals right in avoidance in management uh, okay in evasion you simply are doing something which is illegal so no moral no law nothing and tax management is your duty and that's what essential is so i feel with this everybody understood the subject what i try to convey to you and what we'll do is in the next lecture we'll try to understand what is diversion of income what is uh, application of income what are the tax rates and let's try to solve some problems also okay we'll meet in the next video till then take care